Meta platforms stock. Meta stock. It is not a good day to be a Meta shareholder. And let me show you why. Because today, the stock is down 5.42%. That's not the five-day return. That's not the one-month loss in the stock. That is the one-day return of this equity, indicative of the pain, the fear, the anxiety, constantly proliferating not only around the stock, but around the market more broadly. Five-day returns down 12.38%. One-month returns down 20 0.95%. You can see a fairly stable month and yet so suddenly down, down 18.76%. That, that's the reality of the stock. Now, over the past six months, down 52.17%. Year to date, even worse at 52.69%. And one year returns now, one year returns, we are at a 52 week low, down 51.69%. Five year returns, again on the stock, five year returns are almost going negative, up only 6.33% over the past half a decade. That, that's the reality of this equity. That's the reality of this business right now. A company suffering with the pain, the anxiety more broadly within this marketplace. So what do you do? What's your approach? When so much fear, so much doubt, so much anxiety is proliferating around this business, what should your thoughts be? What should your move be in the marketplace? Well, you can approach it with fear. You can approach it with doubt. Certainly, a lot of investors today are taking that approach, selling off their equities, both retail traders, institutions, everyone saying, listen, had enough of the stock market, too much fear, too much doubt, can't possibly be investing. And I don't blame them. It's been a, a stressful few months, a very, very difficult few months in the stock market. So I don't blame them for, for selling out. That's the natural human inclination in this situation. And quite frankly, if they weren't selling out, if people weren't exiting their equities, then I wouldn't be able to buy this at such a cheap price. And that, that's my position. I'm not hiding away. I'm not buying into the fear. I and watching this company with great interest. Because I know on a fundamental level, in terms of the profitability, in terms of the financial stability, the tangible valuation of this company relative to the growth taking place, there is only one thing that is being screamed at me day over day, and that is buy, 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 buy. This is a massive opportunity, a massively undervalued equity. If you don't trust me, well then have a look at the numbers. Have a look at the tangible values associated with this company. The massive degree of underlying financial stability associated with this company. This video isn't going to be about the price movement. This video isn't going to be about the consistent movements day over day and trying to analyze that and to, to conduct technical analysis. What this is going to be about is looking at the actual company, what is actually being produced by this business. The impressive cash to debt ratio of 3.12, the ability, if they so desired, to instantaneously pay off all their debt obligations three times over and then still have cash on hand to reinvest and build out their company going forward. And especially in this depressed marketplace where small firms in particular are getting their valuations absolutely crushed, naturally this cash debt ratio means they can buy up those small firms opportunistically. They can make tactical acquisitions during this time, stimulate growth within their business by way of acquisition, whilst everyone else is stuck in the sand, unable to utilize their cash on hand. They already have a wall chest of cash present for the company and thus can utilize that not only to survive, but thrive in this recessionary environment. Equity to assets is also very healthy at 0.75. Debt to equity of 0.11 and debt to EBITDA of 0.27. These numbers, they're simply phenomenal. They're simply outstanding. And the Altman score, the Altman score is the same story. Altman score of 9.19, indicating a tremendous degree of underlying safety and stability for this business. Is Facebook going away? Is Meta going away? The answer, based upon all these numbers, based upon the reality of the company, the answer is a definitive no. This company is not going away any time soon. That is despite the hate. That is despite the doubt. Despite people coming out and saying, listen, the reason the stock's down so much is because only old people use Facebook. That's just not true. That's not the reality. These numbers... These numbers are the reality of this company. So financial stability is unequivocally present within this business. Profitability. Profitability is also simply world-class when it comes to Facebook or Meta platforms. Net margins of 31.2%. Every dollar of revenue that comes into the company, 31% of that is pure profit. An immense degree of profitability exuded by this company. So on an industry basis, simply phenomenal. Also, historically... You know, historically not the best for the company, but they're not too far off the high. Median net margins over the past decade have been around 29.77%. And the net margins currently standing at 31 are better than that median price. The maximum over the past decade was around 39%, so still fairly close. Despite the challenges they've been facing, despite 
the Apple privacy changes and the large pullback in spending from advertisers recently, they're still accruing massively profitable net margins. That's indicative of the underlying nature of their business. Think about the capital cost structure of Facebook. What capital costs are there? Think about it. When they run an additional ad on their platform, yes, there's the server costs, yes, there's the initial staffing costs, but when that second ad is actually run on their platform, what does it cost Meta? Absolutely nothing. And that is why the margins are so high. That is why not only the operating margins at 36%, but also the gross margins at 80.34% are so very, very high for this equity. So we know there's financial stability. We know there's a high degree of profitability despite the headwinds against this company and also massive returns on equity. Returns on equity of 28.57%. Returns on assets of 22.39%. This is unequivocally a profitable, firmly entrenched and evidently well-managed business. Despite what people say about Zuckerberg and Saberg, the fact of the matter is these returns on equity are simply outstanding. Returns on equity of 28.57% is indicative of a large degree of not only short-term capital allocation, but long-term vision within the company, making sufficient returns for investors over time, focusing on the long-term profitability and sustainability of their business. That's the reality. All those factors are there. All those factors are very, very appealing. But after the recent declines, after these massive, persistent declines in this equity, what about the valuation? Is it finally an appealing buy price? I've been saying for months on end that Facebook has been an appealing buy. At these lower prices, it is completely, unequivocally undervalued. But what about today? What about at a 52-week low? Is there a superior buying opportunity? The answer? I think the answer is fairly obvious. The answer is yes. And let me show you why. The current PE ratio for Facebook, and I can't believe I'm looking at this, but is only 12.88. Historically, this is the lowest P.E. ratio they have ever had. And also on an industry basis is extraordinarily low for the interactive media space. These low P.E.s, both a Ford P.E. and a current P.E., are despite the massive amounts of growth taking place over the past three years. A three-year free cash flow growth rate of 37.5%, three-year earnings per share growth rate of 22.1%, EBITDA at 24%, and even revenue. Revenue's been compounding at 29.2% over the past three years, massive growth taking place, compounding rapidly over time. And despite that, a value stock PE has been assigned to this company. And so, and this is where it gets outrageous, on the day, based upon the current trading price, current trading price of what was it, I believe, 160, 159, 159.79, based upon that current trading price, all you need to price in, in terms of tangible growth going forward over the next decade, is a growth rate of 3.43%. If Facebook can grow at that, a growth rate of 3.43% going forward over the next decade, then you're getting fair value for this company. You're paying fair value for this business. And here's the astonishing thing. This company over the past decade has grown at 68.5% five-year growth of 27.8% and even one-year growth of 13.1%. If we input the lowest growth rate over the past decade, that growth rate of only 13.1%, then look at that. Look at that price target. Growth rate of 13.1% going forward over the next decade. Discount rate of 9% current earnings per share. Figure of $13.22 a share. Look at that fair value. Fair value of $311.94. A margin of safety of 48.34%. That, that's the reality of this company. That's the reality of this marketplace. The tremendous degree of undervaluation evident within this business. So, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? I'm thinking the same thing I have been thinking for the past several months. This company is unequivocally undervalued. It looks very, very cheap, both in terms of free cash flow, both in terms of earnings in relation to all the underlying statistics correlated with this business. And despite that, the market simply isn't paying attention. The market is too caught up in itself, too caught up in the fear, the doubt, the anxiety to actually acknowledge the massive degree of undervaluation and quite frankly, opportunity evident within this company. To me, an obvious long-term buy and hold. Not a short term. I think over the long term, short term, we could have more volatility, more ups and downs in the stock. But over the long term, over the next 10, 15, 20 years, this appears to me to be a very, very viable long-term play. So of course, conduct your own research first. Look into the company before you make any moves. Analyze the fundamentals as I have here, the financial strength, the profitability, the underlying degree of undervaluation relative to the growth taking place. But... If you enjoyed this video, 
I've helped you learn something more about my current thoughts on meta platforms relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or a topic you want to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.